In this video, I'm in the guard, you're in the guard, we're all in the guard, or the Astra Milliwatt as we paint the fantastic new Cadian Shock Troop Sculpt. Let's get painting. To make painting the light colours easy, we've primed everything using some Zandri Dust Spray, and the first thing we're going to do is paint all of that flak armour. So the colour we're using is Dark Angels Green Contrast Paint. Now, you don't need to have a nice even coverage of this, we just want to make sure it goes in the recesses, as this is going to be our shade. Once that contrast paint is dry, we'll then take some Castellan Green and paint this over the top. Now this will go over in one coat, which is why it's important to get that Dark Angels Green down first. And what we're looking to do is make sure we leave the Dark Angels Green in the recesses so that we don't have to do an additional shade step. The first highlight is with Lauren Forest, and this is going to be a chunky highlight, so don't worry if it does go on a little bit thick in terms of the width. You can always tidy up with Castellan Green if you need to. Just work your way around all the edges of the armour, make sure you use the shape of the model and the tip of the brush where you can. Finally, add some Strachan Green inside that Lauren Forest to give a nice, crisp, sharp highlight. Now use the tip of the brush and the edge of the armour where you can, and just take your time to make sure you get it as fine as you possibly can. If you want to make this pop a little bit more, such as for on officers and characters, then you can add a little bit of a dot of Nurgling Green as well, just on those sharpest edges. Next up, we'll base all of the black areas, and the colour we're going to use is Black Templar. I'm going to be basing all of the boots, all of the weapons, and any other little bits that you would like to be black, such as the undersuit, as well as some of the water carriers as well. You'll get a semi-decent highlight on that Black Templar as you let it dry, but just to accentuate and punch up the contrast a little bit, we're going to take some Dawnstone. And I'm applying this over those raised edges, but I'm making sure that the lines are very, very thin, and this will just help accentuate that highlight. At this point, I want to paint some of the non-hard green colours, such as the canvas on this sergeant's hat. And the colour I'm going to use that is military and green. I'm just going to paint this straight over and let it dry, and then I'll come back and highlight it later on. I'll paint all of the silver necks, and the colour I'm going to base it with is dark aluminium from Vallejo Metal Colour. Don't worry if you haven't got this, you can use lead belcher from Citadel. And I'm just looking to pick out all those areas where I think the metallics are going to show through. There's quite a few fiddly bits, such as belt buckles, so just take your time, especially around areas you've already finished. Shading all of the silver is really easy, using some null oil. Just take your time, once again, not to spill this over part you may have already finished. And also keep an eye on it so it doesn't pool too much, and you get some nasty tide marks. To highlight all the silver, I'm going to use Chrome from Vallejo Model Air. Again, if you haven't got this, you can use Stormhost Silver from Citadel. Now, just take your time with this and use the tip of the brush and drag it along those edges so you get a really nice, crisp, sharp highlight. You don't want to use too much of this because you want to keep some depth to the metallics. The next step is to paint all of the leather. Now, I've gone back in with Zandri Dust and corrected any mistakes I may have made so far. The first colour we're going to use is Wildwood Contrast Paint. I'm going to use this for all the backpacks and all the straps. And this is a nice dark, ready brown colour uh, that will really help show that leather nature of the material. The next colour we're going to use is Garagak Sewer, and I'm going to use this to differentiate some of the other leathers. So for the gaiters, I'm going to paint those with this, which is a slightly lighter brown than the Wildwood. And I'm also going to paint any weapon straps as well as any additional bits of belt that may be on the model. And again, this is just to break up the browns into something a little different to maintain some interest on the model and make sure it doesn't all look the same. Once that's dry, we'll go in and highlight all of the leather. So for the part you painted with Wildwood, we're going to take some Gawthor Brown. And very similar to what we've done on the rest of the model, we're just looking for those sharp raised edges along the straps, as well as any large open areas and folds in the model. And we'll use that to highlight to help make it stand out. And for those areas we painted with Garagak Sewer, we're going to highlight them using Steel Legion Drab. And we're really need to be careful here not to put it on too thickly. So make sure you've got a nice fine tip on your brush and where you can, especially along those gaiters, you can catch the sharp edges and it'll give you a really nice, easy highlight. So let's move on to the fatigue. So again, I've repaired any mistakes with some Xandri dust and I'm now taking some Seraphine sepia and just painting this all over those cream colors. So just take your time with this around areas you've already finished. Make sure you keep an eye on it and you don't put too much on so it pool, pools too deeply. We just want a nice thin layer, especially in those recesses. Once that Seraphim sepia is completely dry, we'll then start to highlight the fatigues using some Ashanti Bone. Now we're looking to leave that Seraphim in the recesses, so we're going to paint the majority of the fatigues using Ashanti Bone. You may need two coats in some places, but generally this will go on fairly quickly. The last highlight we'll put on all the fatigues is with Screaming Skull. Now you don't want too much on your brush and we're just focusing on those most raised parts such as the fold along the arm and along the back of the legs and if we need to along the tunic as well. Use this fairly sparingly, you can always go back and add more if you need to. 
Some of the models will have bed drawers on them, so we'll go back to Militar and Green and just use this to base them up. And then once it's dry, we'll highlight that and any canvas areas such as the hat on the sergeant. We'll use some Creed khaki to highlight all of those canvas areas we've painted with Militar and Green. Now this is a very bright colour, so just take your time and don't put too much on at once. We'll paint all of the flesh next, and this is really straightforward with contrast paints. So if you want a darker skin tone, you don't have to worry about putting any light to base down. You can just take something like Fire Slayer Flesh and paint this straight over the Xandri Dust. For lighter skin tones, we will need to lighten up that base, so I'm just going to take some Screaming Skull and paint this over the Xandri Dust on things like the face and the hands. Once that's dry, it's up to you. You can use whatever contrast paint you want to get different skin tones. For example, here, I've used a little bit of Gulliman Flesh, and I've also used a little bit of Dark Oath Flesh as well to give a more tanned complexion. The last thing we need to do are some of the white elements. So, for example, on the Sergeant, her rank insignia needs to be painted. So we'll base all of it using Corax White, and what we'll do is look to use the shape of the model and just the tip and the edge of the brush to get a nice, crisp base layer down. Once that's dry, we'll highlight it using bold titanium white. Now you can use any white paint that you prefer. I like this one. And all I'm going to do is just be really careful and catch some of the edges using the tip of the brush and also highlight the areas that are most in the light. If you've got any plasma and if you haven't, ask yourself some serious questions. We need to paint that as well. So we're going to base the area using Corax white and then highlight it quickly using that bold titanium white. Once that's dry, we'll take some frost hard contrast paint and you can see the easiest plasma cog in the world start to form in front of your eyes. And there we have it. These Cadians are done and ready for the tabletop. I've really enjoyed building and painting these and can't wait to do more. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out my other content and I'll see you next time.